In this video, we'll take a look at how we can use for loops in HLSL in a custom node in Unreal Engine 5.1 to make more complex shapes and animated patterns. Based upon what we previously learned in videos before this, we now know how we can draw circles. And in this video, we're going to take those circles and draw them at different points along our UV and animate them to produce more complex shapes and movement as seen here. And we're going to all be doing this using for loops in HLSL. So to begin, we're going to start off creating a custom node. And we're going to connect that custom node to our base color. And we're going to start typing some code for this custom node to create a circle. And to do this, I'm just going to show this in Visual Studio Code so we can see the, the syntax and the code a little bit clearer. And we're going to create some code that will create a circle. So this is something we've previously already done. And it's very easy to do. And all we're really going to have to do is first we'll define a variable called result, so float result equals zero, and then we'll return that variable. And then what we'll do is we'll make that result variable equal length with position minus UV less than size. And that's pretty much going to allow us to draw a circle at the location of position. And then UV will just be our UV coordinates or our UV chord uh, node. So what we're going to do is if we take all this and we just copy that and put it into our custom node, we're going to be able to draw a circle. So if I add the inputs for UV and position, and size of the circle very easily we can just connect that up uv goes to texture coordinates and position goes to a constant 2 which is u and v locations or x and y and we'll set it to 0.5 and 0.5 and then size will make a small circle so 0 0.01 and now we have our circle drawn so very easily we can plot or draw a circle. Now if we change this amount here for the position, we can change where that point gets drawn on the UV space. So what we're going to do now is use a for loop in HLSL to draw this point at different areas. So to do that, I'm going to go back to this custom node, just delete all the inputs that I created, and we'll modify our code a bit. So I'm just going to go back to Visual Studio Code. And what we're going to do is a for loop in HLSL. This is super easy to do, same as many other programming languages, just for, and then we'll define a integer or a variable, which will be an integer. So int i, variable called i, equals zero. And then if i is less than 100, i plus plus, and then we have our brackets, which contain what's going to happen if that condition is not met. So right now it's saying there's an integer called i, and it equals 0. If i is less than 100, add 1 to the variable i, and then do whatever is within these brackets. So we'll execute this kind of like 100 times. So it's going to draw 100 circles over and over and over again. Now, what's happening right now is we're doing result equals. So it's just going to draw the circle and the next time erase that information and draw it again. Instead, what we're going to do is result plus equals, and that's going to add to the previous result. So if we draw multiple circles, they will get added to what was previously already added to that result variable. It won't clear it or remove it. It will add to it. So we'll do plus equals. And then what we'll do is we'll make the position change. So as this kind of for loop is happening, the position will be changing each time. So we're going to make some modifications here. We're going to make a position variable. And we're also going to change this not to be less than 100, but less than some sort of variable. So we'll do a variable called n sides. And this will be how many sides our shape is drawn from. So our goal is going to be to plot a point and then draw a circle around that point. And then that circle can be made up of however many sides you want it to be. If it says three sides, it'll end up being like that. If it's four sides, 
it will end up being something like this. And as we add more sides, it will draw a more kind of accurate or a more noticeable circle from smaller points. So that's going to be what we, we try to do here. So we're going to do i is less than number of sides, and then we're going to have the position change uh, based on our for loop here. And we're going to want to draw a circle. So we want to draw a circular shape like that made up of these smaller little circles that we're going to draw. So how do we do that? Well, this position will now equal a new variable. So what we're going to do is this position is no, it's no longer going to refer to this. This will be our center of what we're drawing, but this position will now be a variable we create called float to position and it will equal our center plus the radius. So it's going to be the center point where we want to draw our shape plus how far out we want that shape to be. So it's going to be the full radius of it. So we'll do that center plus radius. And then before going further on this, we're going to create one more variable called angle. And angle will be i divided by number of sides times 2 times pi or 3.14. Now technically pi goes on much further, much further decimal places, but we're not going to get too mathematical about it. 3.14 is going to be fine for what we're going to do now. And that's going to allow us to um, draw a circle by using this angle variable after adding the center and the radius, we're going to multiply it by a float 2, so two values, one for x, one for y. x value will be cosine angle, and the y value will be sine angle, and that will draw us a nice circle. So it will draw us a circle made up of these smaller circles, because these circles will be plotted at the position. The position equals our center point plus the radius, and then multiplied by cosine angle, sine angle, which will draw that circle, and we'll be able to produce a much more interesting result. So let's give this a try before we go any further. I'm going to copy all this code, go back into Unreal, paste it into our custom node, make sure we add all our variables. So for our inputs, we need UV, connect it to our UV coordinates. We're also going to need our center, so where we're plotting the shape. So center, and that's just going to be at 0.5 and 0.5. And then we also need a input for um, our radius, how far out the shape goes. So we'll create a constant for that. We'll just put it at maybe 0.2. And then we'll add another input for our size of the circle, so size, and then we'll connect that to our 0.01. And then we'll also need one more input for number of sides, n sides, how many sides this shape has. And we'll connect that to a constant. And for now, I'm just going to type in three. Let's see what we get. Okay, so there we go. We got our circular shape, but since we specified only three sides, it only plotted one, two, three points. Now if we change that to more sides, like if we change it to eight, okay, now we have eight dots plotted in a circular shape. If we do something like 64, now we have 64 small circles plotted in a circular shape. So now we have something a little bit more interesting. Now I'm going to put this maybe to five or six or something a bit smaller, not not too many circles. And this is interesting. What if we want to add movement to this? Well, if we want these circles to move in a clockwise direction, this is something we can do. So we'll jump back into our Visual Studio code so we can see our code a bit easier. And what we're going to do is to get this to move, we're going to be able to add a value that will constantly increase. Now, if we look at our code, What's determining the circle's shape is our cosine angle and sine angle, and that refers to this variable here. 
and we have i divided by n number of sides times 2 times pi. So if it was times 1, it would actually form a half circle. And if it was point z times 0 0.05, it would actually form only one-fourth of a circle. So that allows us to change how much of the circle we draw. And if we were to connect this or multiply it by time, then it'll be a number that keeps increasing forever. And that will make these dots kind of spin in a clockwise direction. So if we try that, if you replace that times two with a times time, and we take that code, throw that into our custom node here, and make a input for time, and connect that to a time node, we now have our circles moving in a clockwise direction, which is really cool. Now, what if we want to add even a little bit more complexity? What if we want these circles to duplicate out in this direction to be able to repeat these plotted circles going outwards to form almost like lines or more shapes going further out? So to do that, we could nest our loop, our for loop. And to make this possible, I'll jump back into Visual Studio code. We're going to do another for loop, so for, and we'll do a different variable so it doesn't interact with these other variables here and get kind of mixed up. We're going to do int j equals zero, j less than number of copies j plus plus and then we do our open and close bracket and we'll add all of our current code into there so like this make sure that all our spacing and everything is is good and what we'll do now is make some minor adjustments in this second for loop that we have now, we have this number of copies. So we need to push these shapes further out. We have to draw our points, but then draw them again a slight bit more in this direction, and then draw it again, and so on. So to do that, we'll have this secondary for loop here, and we'll have to modify some of our code. Instead of center plus radius, we're going to do center plus j divided by number of copies and then times radius and then times our float cos angle sine angle and by doing that we'll be able to achieve this pattern to be duplicated going outwards and further so if we take all this again throw that back into our code here in Unreal, add one more input for number of copies, so n copies, and we connect that to however many times we want to copy that shape outwards. If we just do two, we get the center point and then that one point on the outside. If we now increase that to five, okay, now we get it duplicated like five times outwards and get this interesting shape. If we do eight or 12, See what that's doing? And now if we change the radius of our overall shape to maybe be 0.5, it'll push everything up further. So we can start to create these interesting shapes. And now I can change the number of sides. Maybe instead of six, we'll do eight. And now we have this kind of clockwise rotating motion of lines made of circles. So already we can start to form some very interesting shapes and animations using for loops in HLSL. Now one last thing that we're going to take a look at, which will be a little bit more interesting, is if we go right back on into our code for a second, and we try modifying something a little bit further. Maybe instead of cosine angle and sine angle, we'll do cosine, and we'll do something like 1 minus angle and sine three times angle. So we'll change this a little bit and then copy this into Unreal. 
and see how that affects our output. So now we almost get these lines doing more of like a 3D motion, kind of spinning around. And it doesn't feel as 2D as, you know, just rotating counterclockwise. It now feels like it's kind of almost doing a 3D motion. So as we kind of manipulate our kind of cosine and sine curves here, we're going to be able to get more interesting movement and start producing things that look almost kind of 3D or have some movement that feels like it has a bit more perspective. So you can actually take this pretty far and make some pretty neat effects. And we'll look at this more in the next videos, but at least now we have a bit of a grasp on how to create for loops in HLSL in Unreal. And this can already open up a world of kind of making much more complex shapes and much more interesting animations as well. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, press the bell button to be notified of future videos. And if you're part of the Patreon, which is in the description below, uh, don't forget that you'll be able to uh, take a look and download the PDF that has some more interesting information about what we've gone over in this video lesson in a bit more detail. So it's great for review and just going over things uh, with a little bit more information uh, if you are part of the Patreon.